In 1970, a television program debuted that changed the way millions of people looked at faith. The Hour of Power. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Featuring the ministry of Robert Schuler, taught a generation that through God's love, your scars can be turned into stars. It was an idea that launched the most popular inspirational television program of its time. And today, the Hour of Power continues with a new voice for a new generation. When you put your trust in God, nothing can stop you. Pastor Bobby Schuler will encourage you and share a message that can give you a new perspective on life. Because whatever your circumstance or the obstacles you face, this moment can be your Hour of Power. Good morning, dear friends. Welcome to the Hour of Power, and thanks for your support to us. Our program is bilingual broadcast, other than original English. If the TV is equipped with night facility, you can watch Our Power in Cantonese. Our Power 2017 Hong Kong Special, God's Love to Hong Kong. Our sharing guest for this year, General Secretary of Hong Kong Gospel Festival 2017, Reverend Joshua Chen. Founder of Charles Yu Training Company Limited, Dr. Charles Yu. Creation TV Controller, Mr. Nick Yip. Director of Yangtze Gang Garment Limited, and Vice Chairman of YGM Trading Limited, Ms. Shelly Chen, BBS JP. Deputy Managing Director, Jardim Medicine Limited, Dr. YK Pan, GBS JP and former member of Legislative Council of Hong Kong SAR, Mr. Lau Chin Shek, JP. Our Power 2017 Hong Kong Special, God's Love to Hong Kong. Stay tuned. Dear friends of Our Power, today is Our Power 2017 Hong Kong Special, the last episode of God's Love to Hong Kong. This year, we have interviewed six sharing guests with different background, including pastor, employer, labor leader, professional, and senior management. They come from different backgrounds. Each of them is having their own stories. The life journeys of some people are smooth, but some are pumpy. Some are involving different areas of works, but some are focusing on one area. Anyhow, their lives are very special. They have eternal life. They have the same character. That is, they embrace love and care for others. Whether they are employee, executive, labor leader, employer, from different walks of life, they all manifest love to others. Where does this love come from? This love comes from God. When confronting the many difficulties in life, good times, adversity, the ups and downs in life, they persevere that it is the law who guides their every journey. Relying on God's words, they have no fear. Because God is with them, we hope that our friends of our power can attain this blessing, Lord Jesus. May the love of the Lord be with you forevermore. There are many opportunities in Hong Kong, not only business and work opportunities. There are many opportunities to listen to the gospel of Jesus. Thus, there will be more evangelistic events in the future. Though our power 2017 Hong Kong special will come to an end, but there are still many good evangelistic events, expecting you to experience Lord Jesus. We hope that you will continue to go to different gatherings to experience God. God bless you. May the Lord be with you forevermore. Our Power 2017 Hong Kong Special, God's Love to Hong Kong. Today, we are very happy to have Mr. Lau Chin Shek as our final guest. Mr. Lau Chin Shek, JP, former member of the Legislative Council of Hong Kong SAR. When he was young, a life experience during a visit to Myanmar, he realized the real meaning of life and decided to commit his life to the Lord. Over the years, he serves in the Hong Kong Christian Industrial Committee as a labor leader with the love of Christ and with his heart. He endeavors to help and serve the laborers in Hong Kong. Stay tuned for the sharing of Mr. Lau Chin Shek later in the program. In Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. 
Today, Pastor Bobby Shillard begins his Christmas message. He shares with us, God will get us to our destiny. We are all looking for meaning of life, so we tend to seek success, achievements and trophies to make our lives worthy. But Pastor Bobby Shillard teaches us, in the Kingdom of God, no matter what we can accomplish, our lives matter. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9, He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of His own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Jesus Christ before the beginning of time. If we are alive, we all have a calling in God. No matter how old or young we are, sick, poor, uneducated, we all have a calling. But one thing Pastor Bobby Shula advises us, we have to focus on our character first, and God will focus on our calling. In the Gospel of Matthew chapter 11, verse 29, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. Focus on what kind of a person we want to be. Devote our lives, do everything we can, and to be more like Lord Jesus. Then God will prepare us and get us to our calling and our destiny. He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of His own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Jesus Christ before the beginning of time. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome, welcome. We are so happy to have you. Do we have anybody who it's their first time or they're from out of state or out of country? Would you raise your hand? Yeah. Welcome. We are so honored to have you. Would you turn around and shake your hands to the person next to you and say, God loves you and so do I. All right, well, we're so glad you're here. We're going to have fun today. We're going to rejoice in the, the real presence of the kingdom of God. And let's begin by praying. Father, we thank you that we are in your world. This is the Father's world, and we trust that we're, no matter what darkness that we're in, we can stop worrying, we can stop hurrying, and in the name of Jesus, we can be patient and wait for your Holy Spirit to do the hard work of breaking chains and creating new tomorrows. So we thank you, Lord, that we walk in hope and in faith today. No matter what storm, no matter how cold it gets, we trust that you are faithful. You're good. And it's in Jesus' name we come rejoicing today. Amen. Amen.
preparation for Bobby's message this morning, the words of our Lord, found in Isaiah. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of deep darkness. A light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the days of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us, a child is born, to us, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. May we rejoice today knowing God will get us, his children, to our destinies.
Good morning, everyone. We're happy to invite a friend of mine, Mr. Lao Chin Shek, for today's interview. Chin Shek himself has done a lot of contributions for Hong Kong people. He's a former member of the Legislative Council and an officer of the Christian Industrial Committee. It can be said he's done this job for decades. And now he's the vice chairman of the Christian Industrial Committee. He endeavors to get benefits for laborers and preaches the gospel to them through the committee. Hello, Chin Chin. Hello. I'm glad I can interview today. Thank you. Thank you very I've much. I've wanted many times to interview Mr. Lao Chin Chek. Two years ago. Yes, two years ago. Finally, we have the opportunity to interview him today. Well, I know you're a diehard fan of Hour of Power. You told me every time that we met, I watched Hour of Power that day and was very grateful. We can say you know much about the development of Hour of Power. Would you please tell us why you like the program Hour of Power? The first reason is the flexibility of airtime. Yes. Sometimes I go to mainland China, and I am not in Hong Kong. If I leave on Sunday, I can watch it on Saturday. If I come back on Saturday, I can watch it on Sunday. More choices for me. And I like the whole worship. There are testimonies, beautiful hymns, and Pastor Schuller's sermon. His sermon is getting better and better. Yes. His messages are very clear. I think yes. the most important thing, he has mm -hmm. life experience. In his sermon, he shares his testimonies. Mm -hmm. Not only mm -hmm. just interpret the Bible. Generally, it would be easier to embrace the whole service. So I often encourage others to watch. <laughs> yes, you're right. He is anointed. Well, since a few years ago, he's taken over the ministry right up until now. He's more and more confident and is anointed. And I met him several times personally. He has a heart for the service then. He is very genuine. In the whole service, he would share everything that happened to him. Then put God's word into his sermon so that people learn from it while watching. Yes, Pastor Bobby Schuller is a God-given young pastor. Young people should watch more of his program. Chin Shek, you've served laborers in Hong Kong for decades now. We really appreciate that. But what drives you to serve for so many years? Does your faith have any effect on you then? Honestly speaking, I joined the Christian Industrial Committee in 1971. I wasn't formally hired until February 1972. I was offered the job, but not paid at the time. Someone would call me if there were labor disputes or strikes, and the labor department was in admiralty. I went there, and I didn't know anything. I did not know about the labor laws. I only knew that I took up this job. I needed to be involved in the labor disputes or strikes, listen to them, and offer assistance. It began here. In fact, I think that the first one or two years after joining the industrial committee, I thought I could really do something. I thought that I had the ability, and they liked me as well. I began to have a sense of accomplishment but I had a very strong feeling when I got the job done. I felt very lonely. There were many things I wanted to find someone to share with, but I didn't know whom I should find. Hmm. I was in this kind of struggle most of the time. Hmm. Later, in 1974, it was my first trip. I joined a church's mission to Myanmar and Thailand. The first stop was Myanmar. I believe that not many people would like to travel to Myanmar. Yes, the airport was very dim. While arriving downtown, some people splashed water suddenly. I found that they were having showers in the dark. Maybe that is their habit. Most people did not have enough food to eat, and poor population. We stayed in YMCA. I remember that a fan was on the verge of collapse. 
not to mention about air conditioning. We went to another city, Mandalay. We had to take a seven-hour train there. When I got the train, I got bit seriously. The fleas were like tanks. We squatted down. We even sprayed insect repellent, but it didn't work. And then the train started. Someone took our sweater, threw it outside the train. Then someone caught it from outside, and the sweater was lost. The environment was like that. Until the last day in Myanmar, our church had a gathering. The general secretary of Myanmar Christian Council shared some words with us. At that time, as I said earlier, only few people traveled to Myanmar. There were a lot of regulations, and the Burmese couldn't travel aboard. Even now, I'm still deeply touched. Although we are separated, but we are not alone. For God is with us. I thought of us as Hong Kong people. We could visit Myanmar or other places any time. To go abroad, have phones, we could do anything. But why? We are not separated. We have freedom to meet people at different places, but we just feel lonely. I feel lonely. Why? At that time, this greatly impacted me. So I spoke to the pastor. I can see now. That they are in such a scarce environment, in very poor living conditions, but he had the life in Jesus. His life was full of vitality, not because they eat badly, living conditions are so bad, and they didn't have freedom to travel, or possibly under a great political pressure and a religious pressure. Are you talking about Burmese Christians? Yes, Burmese. Myanmar is a Buddhist country under a military government. Stratocracy, right? How come they can live out a life of vitality? Oh, God is with them. Then I said, I decided to get baptized after I go back to Hong Kong. Also, I took back my whole life. I think it is God Himself who chooses people. I was a board member. Of the Hong Kong University, for ten years, I was the deputy head of the social services group in Hong Kong University for a very long time. I feel that God gives me opportunities to serve the laborers. Yes. Honestly speaking, many labor laws nowadays I've gotten involved in the legislation. Uh. I treasure these life experiences. It is true. If not him, I do not know what I will be.、Mm-hmm. After committing my life to the Lord, I got a critical illness, and I stayed in the hospital for almost seven months. But I thought of it from a different angle. If I hadn't believed in the Lord, I couldn't get through that seven months. I really couldn't hold on. This is also an important part of my life journey. Overall, it is my point of view. For me, what is Christianity? God is in my heart. Whenever there is gain or loss, health or sickness, He is with me. In my career, there are ups and downs, highs and lows. He never gave up on me. Yes, Amen. It is a very important experience and testimony in my life. How he cares.、Uh, you just mentioned about your testimony. You believed in Jesus when you were in Myanmar. You saw the Christians there, still full of joy and peace, under pressure and a poor environment. That moved your heart, and you wanted to commit to the Lord. Was that in the early 1970s? In 1975.、Oh, you came to Christ in 1975. Yes, I went to Myanmar in 1974.、Oh. Ah, well, thank God. In the many years of faith from the 70s, 80s, 90s, and till today, well, that's more than 40 years. What's the most abundant and special thing God has given to you? 
my greatest feeling is, whether in storms, in setback, you would feel that someone is with you. Amen. As we always say, you think there's only one set of footprints, but actually, he has already carried you, right? Yes. I have never been worried about the path ahead of me. I know I need to lift up to him totally to the Lord. Yes, because in the time of Lord Jesus, he was on a ship. No fears in the raging storm. God who calms the storm is also a God who calms the storms in our lives. Whoever trusts in him and God is leading and blessing in every step. Well, you worked so hard for decades in this society to help grassroots to fight for many benefits for their labors or to serve them. Isn't it because of the love of Jesus who touched your heart so you can persevere? Your work isn't easy. It's exhausting and unrewarding, especially in the past. We are helping the working class with a fear. Frankly, just because you have faith with the Lord Jesus in your heart, these things would not frighten you. It is because it's his work. I am only assisting him, right? Yes. So, in the process, I feel his grace is sufficient for me. I am really thankful. Through the connections with the workers, I learned a lot. There are so many things that we need to prioritize. For example, in the 70s, what do you think is the most difficult. The most difficult was that some factories closed down. The owners fled. Yes, an no unscrupulous wages. employer. I don't know then. why. Whether it is a lack of conscience or unscrupulousness. But when you work as a worker, you just simply work for a living. Yes, for when a living. When it is time to get paid, you can't find the employer. You don't know how to get your salary. You feel helpless. In the 70s, we began to have some new labor laws, such as the Unpaid Rest Days Act in 1970, the Severance Pay Act in 1974, the Paid Annual Leave Act in 1977, and the Paid Maternity Leave Act in the 80s. However, we always think that if you can't help the workers to get their wage arrears, all other benefits, like paid annual leave, which is only a fringe benefit. Especially once, there was a factory owner who fled. The bank took over, and we got it so that the bank was willing to pay the wage arrears. The workers were waiting outside our office. Then I saw an old lady, very old. She was playing a Rubik's Cube. I asked her, how old are you? She replied, I'm 90 years old. What did she do in the factory? She helped in cutting loose thread. In the 70s? Right, in the 70s, in the factories. <laughs> I did this before during a she summer holiday. She told me why she plays the Rubik's Cube. She hoped that it helped train her fingers to be more flexible. In this case, I observed three things. First, she worked till 90 years old, and she still had wages in arrears. What was her situation? However, she still tried hard to play the Rubik's Cube. So, for wage arrears, I must find a way to solve. Second, she worked till 90 years old. Why not retired? Why is she not retired? So, I had to arrange a pension for them. Third, I saw something from her. To a humble man, what is the meaning of greatness? The greatness is that she is responsible for her work. Not because her job is insignificant, and today she had wages and arrears. She didn't give up. She still plays the Rubik's Cube to make her hands more flexible. I am deeply impressed. For me, a lot of things, God gave me a lot of opportunities. When I connected with different people, we had some reflections. What is the meaning of doing this job? You will see 
that this is not your work. It is God who continues to work. It is God who continues to work and strengthen us. God's grace is sufficient for us. Yes. Chinchek, I want to ask you how to preach the gospel in your workplace. We're talking about many different sectors in Hong Kong, many businesses, grassroots, working class. How do you preach the gospel to them? In fact, when I preach the gospel to the workers, they will ask me, why do you Christians care about these things? Mm. What is it that's related to Christianity? However, when you spend time with them, they will understand why I get involved in this work. It's like the story of the Samaritan. Which is the injured one at the side of the road? He is likely the one who had wages in arrears. Maybe those who work overtime continuously. Among these people, you walk with them. When I am with them, they will watch from a different angle. Christianity and the Lord Jesus are like this. I think this is very important because I feel the need to serve them and walk with them. Then you will be worthy to share your faith with them. That is my personal experience. In the past few years, I realized this very deeply. As you just said, I have done a lot of things for the rights of the workers. Uh, but I think when someone was being whipped, or I used my own words, someone got wages in arrears and unfairly dismissed. He got his rights. Then how is his life in the future? Whether he will continue to care about someone with the same situation. Or he changed his role to bully others. So, I feel the need to have the Lord Jesus in our hearts. Only this way, I believe the world will become more like the heavenly kingdom. Lord Jesus is a compassionate God, a God of love. So Lord Jesus came to the world for a short period. It was only 33 years, but he made a lot of friends in 33 years. He was the friend of tax collectors, sinners, and prostitutes. He brings his life and his love to them. The Bible says that his heart is merciful. So you're right, if everyone, whether it's an employer or an employee, with the love of Jesus, people can feel this love. And most importantly, is you serve them with your heart. So I think your role is very important, especially all those years you cared about the needs of the grassroots. So I think the employers have their own responsibility. If the employer were Christian, they would treat their employees with justice. When the employees were Christians, they did their best at work. We're serving one another in love, that's the most beautiful thing, I think. Yes. At Chinchek, I sincerely hope you will encourage our friends of Hour of Power how to draw people to the Lord through evangelical meetings. Also, which Bible verse touches you the most all these years? Uh, which Bible verse would that be, do you think? Let's talk about the Bible first. A new command I give to you. Love one another. Amen. As I have loved you. So... You must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. God is among us. The evangelistic event is a chance for people to believe in Jesus. But at the evangelistic event, good testimony is also needed. Let them feel that the event is related to our living and to our lives. Right. I believe that this is the thing we want to do. Yes, and yours is a very good testimony. We hope that you can share with us more in other gospel events. Share with the people of Hong Kong, particularly to our workers. 
They need your testimony to encourage them. Thank you, Chinchin. Thank you. We hope you can share with us again an hour of power. Thanks for your invitation. Thank you. All right, well, good morning. We hope you're having fun today. For those of you who are watching on television, we just want you to know Shepherd's Grove is a movement of God's people that are inviting new people to this celebration every day. We are living every moment in the Father's world, and we want you to come and join us. No matter who you are, we want you to know that we like people here at Shepherd's Grove. And so no matter what you're going through, we want you to know that this is a safe place to be who you are in the midst of your challenges and become a happy and whole student of Jesus. Uh, if you're watching on TV, we hope you come down and worship with us. We're here every single morning, and we'd love to be a part of your spiritual family. Friends, would you stand with me? We're going to say this confession together. Hold your hands out like this. I'm not what I do. I'm not what I have. I'm not what people say about me. I am the beloved of God. It's who I am. No one can take it from me. I don't have to worry. I don't have to hurry. I can trust my friend Jesus and share his love with the world. Thanks, you can be seated. Now, unfortunately, I have actually had the flu the last three days. So all day Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, I was sick in bed. And uh, I, sort of, I put together a little something today. I emailed the team last night with some slides. But today, I'm, I'm really going to be speaking more from the heart, meaning that I haven't prepared as much as I normally am. So have a, a bit of grace with me. But I, I really just want to speak from the heart. I, I want to begin, um, as we've been in this series of Advent, Advent is a time in which uh, you're waiting for something. And so Advent means the arrival. It means that that thing you've been waiting for has come. And so for us, Advent becomes a time in which we build up within ourselves hope. That Jesus himself becomes a symbol uh, and the actual reality of all the things that we hope for. And then as we wait in the milieu of life, you know, the suffering of sickness or, or poverty or the other challenges that we face in the midst of all of that, we serve the kind of God who breaks into darkness. Somehow God tends to break through and bring us the miracle we need. So Advent is a time of training into our soul um, rhythms and, and, and uh, a spirit of hope. God will get you to your destiny. Today I want to talk about the idea that although all of us have a calling in God, too often we're focused on our calling and not our character. And that if you focus on your character, God will focus on your calling. I, there is a huge looming fear in all people that, well, when it, it's all said and done, I didn't do anything with my life that truly mattered. Almost all of us live with a daily fear that my life won't matter, that I need to do something spectacular. And this is a big challenge. And the, it seems like the wealthier our nations become, the more this existential question becomes a major issue for us. And so I just want to begin by saying this. In the kingdom of God, no matter what you accomplish, uh, your life matters. Can we just say that? That no matter what you do, no matter what trophies you have on the wall, no matter what you can say at your retirement party, or even what you can say on your deathbed, no matter what you accomplish, your life matters. Your life matters because you are loved by God. And that's very good news. And too often we think that our lives, we have to earn something to make our lives worth anything. So many of us were like, we're so scared that, it's, that our life's not going to be matter. That our, that our life's not going to matter. And it does. It always matters. We know that there is a heaven. And we know God is faithful. And we know he is our father. And just like any father wouldn't abandon his kids, we know God won't abandon us. Amen? 
the more you can build that knowledge into your soul that you're a ceaseless being with an, a, an eternal destiny in God's good universe, as Dallas Willard said, the less you worry about always doing something spectacular and fantastic. That's a big concern, isn't it? I mean, I just feel that so many people are so worried that I'm going to die and my life is not going to matter. And I just think about all the good people in the past who knew the Lord that had simple lives, that, that were farmers or they worked the same job all of their lives, but they were faithful to the gospel and they knew Jesus and they loved the Lord. Did their lives matter? Of course they did. Every life matters. And guess what? Not all of us are going to be Julius Caesar or Brad Pitt or the president of the United States, okay? There's only, only a handful of people in history are going to do that. And in the kingdom of God, they're the lowest. That's what Jesus teaches us. That if you want to be the greatest, you become a servant. That you become humble and you become like Jesus. And there will be a day when we get to heaven that we'll see that that makes sense. And so I just want to begin by saying, don't worry. Your life matters. Not because of what you do. Your life matters because you're a human being and you're loved by God. You're treasured. All right, can we just establish that? Okay, God does not value you or love you more because of your trophies. So let's talk about calling, okay? But all of us do have a calling, and I just want to say four things before I actually get into the text. Four things about reflections on calling. Number one, I just want to say that all of us have more than one calling. All of us have more than one calling. We always think that there's this one great thing we're supposed to do in life, but let me just tell you that all of us have multiple callings all the time that God calls us to do this, and later he calls us to do that. Think about Jesus. We always think that Jesus had one calling, but he didn't really start his ministry until he was 30. Jesus, as a, as a child, was a faithful student, and then later he was a faithful carpenter, and he built things, and he had to work with people constantly. And all of that time, God was preparing him for the next calling, which was to be a rabbi. And even then, think about Jesus. He had 12 disciples. He's from a little podunk part of the empire that nobody really cared about. He wasn't even from Jerusalem. He was from like the northern outskirts. You know, but that was his calling. And God used those things uh, for, for major, major, obviously to change the whole world. So you never have just one calling. Number two, Every calling comes to an end. This is maybe one of the saddest things because for many of us, when we're doing what God has called us to do, he's, I'm doing what I was born to do. Sometimes it suddenly comes to an end. We get fired or we get an injury or sick or, or, or a divorce or, or, or some twist happens in the plot. We just weren't expecting that and we think, but that's what I was called to do. How could God let this happen? But every calling comes to an end. No matter where you are in life, you are in a season. And seasons come and seasons go. And, if, and that's, that should give you hope because if you're in a place of sort of an in-betweenness, well, God still has another calling for you. Number three, and I already said this, but your calling is not your identity. You know, I, I may be a pastor, and that's what I'm called to do at this time, but someday I may not be a pastor. And uh, that's not who I am. If what we do vocationally or what we do for a living becomes a part of our identity, then our soul is on a roller coaster because if that thing gets taken away from us, we lose our sense of who we are. And so our life becomes fragmented as we try and search for a new identity. The one thing that will never change in your life is that you are loved. That God loves you and never stop loving you. There's nothing you can do to change that. That is the constant. And if our lives are rooted in that truth, we will have a deep sense of peace and joy in everything else we do. Amen? Amen. Number four, and this is the thing I really want you to hear. If you're alive, you have a calling. If you are alive, you have a calling. I just want to say this. You didn't miss out on your calling. And you say, you don't understand. I've been giving a week to live. You didn't miss out on your calling. 
You don't understand, I went through a divorce. You didn't miss out on your calling. You don't understand, I, I kind of feel like I've lost my faith, I don't know where I'm going. You didn't miss out on your calling. You have a calling right now. God's calling you to do something. It doesn't matter how old you are, sick, poor, uneducated, young, you have a calling. Look, there's nothing more inspiring than seeing people at the end of their rope pursuing knowledge, pursuing growth, and pursuing God's best for others. Look, if you're alive, you're alive for a reason. If you're alive, you have a calling. And that's very, very good news. All that to simply say, friends, focus on your character, and God will get you to your calling. Look at the habits in your life, the little things, and devote your life to becoming more like Jesus, to becoming a Sermon on the Mount kind of person. Do everything you can to live and be more like Jesus, and God will get you to your calling. And today I just want to say, you can stop worrying about it. Don't worry about your calling. Worry about your character. And I'll just finish. When we've seen this quote before, I'll just one quote from Dallas Willard at the end. This is his prayer. Lord, don't give me more success than my character can handle. If that's a hard prayer to pray, congratulations, you're a human being. It's hard for all of us to pray that, but the harder it is for you to pray, the more you need to focus on your character and the less you need to focus on succeeding. If you focus on your character, God will prepare you for your destiny. Don't worry about your destiny. God's going to get you there, and it is good. And if you trust in the name of Jesus, your future is always bright, even when your present is dark. If you trust in the chain-breaking name of Jesus Christ, you will get to your good destiny. I promise. You don't have to worry. Focus on your character. Become more like Jesus, and God will get you where you need to be. Amen? Amen. All right, would you pray with me? In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray that you'd forgive us of our sins, that you renew us, and that you'd make us Jesus' kind of people. I pray, Father, that you'd fill us with your Holy Spirit. You'd help us to understand that this is your world and to give us faith that no matter what, we don't have to worry. That you want us to do great things, but I pray that you prepare our hearts and minds so when those great things come, we have the character to endure them and fulfill them. Lord, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks, friends, for being here. I, I, I hope that you leave encouraged, renewed, and restored. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks for watching Our Power and your support to us. Today is the last episode of our Out Power 2017 Hong Kong Special, God's Love to Hong Kong. Our Power 2017 Hong Kong Special, God's Love to Hong Kong. Our sharing guest for this year, General Secretary of Hong Kong Gospel Festival 2017, Reverend Joshua Chen. Founder of Charles Yu Training Company Limited, Dr. Charles Yu. Creation TV controller, Mr. Nick Yip. Director of Yangtze Gang Garment Limited and Vice Chairman of YGM Trading Limited, Ms. Shelly Chen, BBS JP. Deputy Managing Director, Jardy Matheson Limited, Dr. YK Pan, GBS JP. 
and former member of Legislative Council of Hong Kong SAL, Mr. Lau Chin Shek, JP. Our Power 2017 Hong Kong Special. God's luck to Hong Kong. Dear friends of Our Power, today is Our Power 2017 Hong Kong Special, the last episode of God's Love to Hong Kong. This year, we have interviewed six shaman guests with different backgrounds, including pastor, employer, labor leader, professional, and senior management. They come from different backgrounds. Each of them is having their own stories. The life journeys of some people are smooth, but some are pumpy. Some are involving different areas of works, but some are focusing on one area. Anyhow, their lives are very special. They have eternal life. They have the same character. That is, they embrace love and care for others. Whether they are employee, executive, labor leader, employer, from different walks of life, they all manifest love to others. Where does this love come from? This love comes from God. When confronting the many difficulties in life, good times, adversity, the ups and downs in life, they persevere that it is the law who guides their every journey. Relying on God's words, they have no fear. Because God is with them, we hope that our friends of our power can attain this blessing, Lord Jesus. May the love of the Lord be with you forevermore. There are many opportunities in Hong Kong, not only business and work opportunities. There are many opportunities to listen to the gospel of Jesus. Thus, there will be more evangelistic events in the future. Though our Power 2017 Hong Kong special will came to an end, but there are still many good evangelistic events expecting you to experience Lord Jesus. We hope that you will continue to go to different gatherings to experience God. God bless you. May the Lord be with you forevermore. In Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Today, Pastor Bobby Shillard begins his Christmas message. He shares with us, God will get us to our destiny. We are all looking for meaning of life, so we tend to seek success, achievements and trophies to make our lives worthy. But Pastor Bobby Shula teaches us, in the Kingdom of God, no matter what we can accomplish, our lives matter. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9, He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of His own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Jesus Christ before the beginning of time. If we are alive, we all have a calling in God. No matter how old or young we are, sick, poor, uneducated, we all have a calling. But one thing Pastor Bobby Shula advises us, we have to focus on our character first, and God will focus on our calling. In the Gospel of Matthew chapter 11, verse 29, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart. Focus on what kind of a person we want to be. Devote our lives, do everything we can, and to be more like Lord Jesus. Then God will prepare us and get us to our calling and our destiny. He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of His own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Jesus Christ before the beginning of time. Our Power This Motivational TV program is broadcast weekly on TVB Pearl Channel. Every Saturday at 10 a.m. in the morning and every Sunday morning at 6 a.m. And you can also watch live simultaneously on www.ourofpower.org or my TV Super. Thanks for joining. God loves you and see you next week on TVB Pearl.